Hey, um, so speaking of gold, you know, Stacy, as luck would have it, we had an occasion to talk with Mike Maloney of goldsilver.com. Uh, yeah. Yes. He, you were talking about the 70s and you were talking about gold. We were on the gold center back in the 70s. We had some funky music. We had some funky times. People were still wealthy. Uh, workers earned honest wages, real wages in which they could afford homes. They could afford to live here in Manhattan. We ran into Mike Maloney. I grabbed my smartphone and I went after him. We talked to him on the streets here. Here's a clip. Mike, nice to see you again. It's great seeing you again, Max. How are you doing? All right, the, the drums are beating. The gold bugs are breathing. Things are turning. Cycles are flipping around. It looks like the time to talk to you about gold and silver is upon us once again. Uh, Mike, uh, let me ask you this. The U.S. dollar, it's strong but it's backed by the Pentagon. It's backed by a Ponzi scheme called the Federal Reserve Banking System. When you're the cycle master, is the cycle, the end of the cycle near? I think it's pretty darn close. Uh, these economic expansions can't last forever. Uh, you know, we have a recession and then there's an expansion. This is now the third longest expansion in history. Uh, there have been 47 economic expansions in the history of the United States. So the odds are that it's going to end sometime very, very soon. Okay, now to put things in perspective, back in the 2008 period when they had a subprime collapse and then the Fed came in and started printing lots of money and some folks said, hey, this is gonna be inflationary. And you rightly pointed out that, you know, actually it's gonna be kind of deflationary because the money printing is not gonna be fast enough to account for the collapse of asset prices. And sure enough, we've had this deflation. And in that deflation, Bond prices have gone up, interest rates have gone down, the Fed has taken on trillions of dollars worth of so-called assets, and uh, according to your cycle work and theory, uh, at some point that flips, and we see then the beginning of inflation. Now there's two types of inflation, or there's a, more than two types, but the, let me ask you this, just talk a little bit about be real inflation versus inflation inflation, if you will, and, and are we on the cusp of a breakout of inflation? Well, we've had real inflation of base currency, the currency that the Federal Reserve creates. Uh, we have had a deflation of the uh, non-base base currency portion of the M2 money supply. There has been a collapse in the credit creation from banks that the Federal Reserve almost exactly offset with all of their currency creation. And that is the reason you didn't see the inflation occur in on Main Street. You only saw it occur on Wall, in Wall Street and some of the other uh, asset classes. Uh, but we're uh, getting to the end of this thing. And like I've said many times before, I'd rather be a year or two early than one day late. Uh, this time, it's, there's, it's really going to be something. It took a 400% increase in the, current, the base currency supply to uh, get a certain amount of economic pop. Uh, we're back in the studio. Hey, you know what? We had a cut right there because the copyright terrorists. That's right. We were outside doing this interview when some uh, song in the background, some James Brown was playing, talking about the godfather of, of soul, the inventor of funk. And so we had it. And now we're back in the studio. What, what, of, course, so of course, James Brown wore a lot of gold. He liked gold. He, he, yeah. And um, I'm going to read you the rest of the text. You can watch. Hopefully our editor will be able to drop some of the video of Mike Maloney as the next 20 seconds he is talking, but the James Brown music is playing in the background, so I will read because copyright terrorism, you're not allowed to, even though you're in the public space, you're not, this they can control your what you're allowed to hear in that space. So Mike Maloney says it will we'll probably, probably take, take about, about the, same the same amount again, but this time instead of starting at 0 0.8 trillion, we're starting at 4 trillion. So you're talking about an increase in the currency supply that is unlike the world has ever known, except for places like Weimar, Germany. Right, now, you know, the thing about gold is that you typically look at it at the valuation in terms of debt that's outstanding, and you try to figure out, well, there's how much debt per ounce of gold in the world, and so what's the intrinsic value of per ounce versus the debt in the world? And since the debt has increased quite dramatically over the past five, six, seven years, the actual value of gold is cheaper today versus the debt than when it was at $250 an ounce, even though it's above 1,000, even though it's above $1,200 an ounce. Relative to the amount of debt in the world, it's cheaper than it was when it was at $250 to $300 an ounce. That's how much debt exploded around the world. That's why it's suddenly becoming uh, quite compelling for money managers and investors now to own gold. 
By the way, you know, I just want to say that I feel kind of like that victim on the United Airlines flight. The fact that we are in a public space, thousands of people around, and that you can't play, you can't hear the words, which his words are more important, perhaps, in this situation than James Brown's music. And, you know, the fact that we, you have to cut away from that just because of these copyright issues and his background noise, like, I, I don't understand that. I feel like we're being dragged off the plane we're being dragged back into the studio to have to read his Well, the text. public space is being shrunk down to uh, being non-existent. America was built on the idea of a public space. Democracy is kind of like the public space, public participation. The value of America should be judged on how aggressively the public space is expanding. The fact that it's diminishing to the point where you have virtually no public space means America, by definition, is dead. So the last words he had said before we cut back to the video is the world has never known this sort of increase in the currency supply since, except for places like Weimar, Germany. So cut back to the tape. Now I hear the music in the background. It sounds like James Brown. Are we ready to get funky in the precious metals markets? That's what I want to know. Get on the good foot. Get on the one. Now let me ask you something. Price signals are a big part of economics, okay? The markets come together, buyers, sellers, and the result is the price, and that's a signal, and that telegraphs to the rest of the economy how they should act, and then the whole cycle repeats over and again. If, if the price signal mechanism breaks down, you have a breakdown across the economy, in the gold market and in the silver market, we've said for many years that there's price manipulation going on in the precious metal sector. And a lot of people say, no, you guys are paranoid. We've just now heard that insiders at the Bank of England have admitted to rigging LIBOR. And this is on top of a lot of evidence to suggest that there's been rigging in precious metals. What are your thoughts at this juncture on that? Well, it's more than just evidence. I mean, right now we have had the, I mean, the evidence is there. Uh, there's uh, current court lawsuits going on. Uh, the precious metals markets have been rigged. The uh, AM PM fix, the London fix, is one of the things where they've already proven that it's been rigged. And what happens though is rigging uh, destroys that price discovery mechanism and causes distortions that uh, allow the opportunity. I'm glad that it was rigged because I got to buy precious metals at an artificially depressed price. The rigging was to cause a suppression. Right, okay, let, let's, let's focus on this. For, but the demand for precious metals has been actually quite high, particularly in countries that are going under stressful, stressful situations, Venezuela for one, and others. And so the, 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 the demand is quite high, and yet the, the price has been soft. Whereas in the bond market, the supply has never been greater in the history of financialized markets, and yet with all that supply, the price is going up. This is a complete repudiation of all the rules and regulations we know about economics. How long can this go on, Mike Maloney? Well, you can't possibly have a manipulation-free economy if you've got a central bank that is allowed to purchase assets with, by counterfeiting. And so... Talk uh, about they, that a minute, because that's a key point. They print the money out of their uh, the thin air, and then they buy real stuff with it, right? Right. It is one of the most immoral things that I've ever heard of, allowing any entity to uh, purchase real assets and bid them away from you and I with currency they created from nothing. Now, the pent-up demand for gold, I would think now, would represent an interesting scenario where once the wheels come off this dollar-denominated global economy, and it looks like with the U.S. needing some countries to come into the fold, principally Russia, China, Iran, to extend their Ponzi scheme, if they push back, and they have the wherewithal to push back, and the Ponzi scheme that is the U.S. dollar comes to an end, and the inflation starts to kick in, the ability to keep that gold price down using manipulation, if that breaks apart, then would we see a gap price on the upside? Yes, it would be a catapult, and it should be something spectacular. Uh, you know, it's, it's been manipulated for so long, there's so much energy built up, and then you've got things occurring like Russia and China and India purchasing, um, on the average, they're purchasing an amount equal to or greater than the entire world production of gold, so it means that the rest of the, the what they're purchasing is coming from the West. So we're sellers, we're going to end up being the people that are poor, they're going to be, and you know, they've been very 
very, very smart. Right. So, uh, I mean, the, the world production of gold, uh, I, the figures off the top of my head, it's roughly 300 tons, 350 tons. You're, and they're buying more than that every year. They're buying right. more than the annual production of gold. And the only place they can get that really is from the West. So the West is liquidating their gold to keep the paper Ponzi scheme afloat. China, Russia uh, are meanwhile accumulating gold. And oh, by the way, they're now at loggerheads and it looks like we're on the precipice of World War III. You know, it's like uh, going to a gunfight with a knife. Uh, this is a paper knife versus solid gold bricks. You know, like America is gonna defeat Russia and China by throwing paper airplanes at them. Uh, you know, and they're going to be starting throwing gold bricks. I mean, you know, th is that going to work? Exactly. And I think that you're going to see the average person in the United States get a lot poorer. And the people that are holding gold and silver are going to get a lot wealthier. Uh, we are, you know, it, it just amazes me that this uh, Ponzi scheme of the stock markets has gone on for so long. And we're having this uh, rally still. And it's at the very end of this very stretched out economic expansion that's been the weakest economic expansion in U.S. history. That's uh, People don't understand that. The expansion's been the weakest in history. The latest number is like 0.6, 1% GDP growth. Absolutely tepid. But low, more debt. More debt. Right. Less growth. All right, got to cut her off there. Mike Maloney, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. All right, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. We want to thank our guest, Mike Maloney of GoldSilver.com. If you want to reach us on Twitter, it's Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.